ECDC On Air, the podcast of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Keeping up to date with European epidemiology. Hello and welcome to this podcast. My name is Catherine and I am your host for today's episode of ECDC On Air. This is the podcast of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control, which is recorded from our headquarters in Stockholm, Sweden. In this episode, we will talk about tuberculosis and in particular molecular surveillance, detection of new epidemics and the discovery of emerging strains. To shed some light on these fascinating subjects, we have with us Kshaba Todman, a microbiology expert at ECDC. Hello, Kshaba. Hello, Catherine. It's my pleasure to be here today. Could you first introduce yourself and tell us what led you to work on TB? I got a Master of Sciences in Molecular Biology, and after that, I started to work uh, in the TB laboratory at the Respiratory Clinic uh, of Semmelweis University in Budapest. And in fact, that was my first uh, real contact with uh, mycobacteria, in particular mycobacterium tuberculosis. After five years uh, working at the respiratory clinic, uh, I really got in love with the topic and with working with mycobacterium tuberculosis. And based on that, I uh, did my PhD in theoretical medical sciences, focusing on medical microbiology and molecular uh, diagnostic and molecular characterization of mycobacterium tuberculosis was my uh, major topic. Okay, and what are you doing now at ECDC? Now at ECDC, I am coordinating the microbiology activities for uh, tuberculosis and gonorrhea. In particular, it includes uh, coordination of the reference laboratory networks, implementation of uh, laboratory surveillance activities and the molecular surveillance activities for uh, those two pathogens. Could you tell us what is molecular surveillance? Molecular surveillance is a routine collection of uh, genetic information of the specific microbes which help us investigate the DNA of the microbes and shed light on how they cause illnesses and become resistant to medications. And uh, some pathogens might be resistant even to vaccines, which are uh, used to prevent infection or development of the disease. In combination with the epidemiological data, we can understand how these microbes are spreading in the community. And this is very important part in breaking the transmission chains and prevent expansion of the disease or epidemic. Can you explain us how you detect cross-border molecular clusters and what it means? In order to understand uh, how we detect molecular clusters, it's good if we know what we are using as a basis for detection of molecular clusters. We know that every living organism has its own genome. Genome is the complete set of genes and genetic material in a, one cell or in an entire organism. So all the information that organism needs to live, to form itself and to multiply itself, it's coded in the genome. So genome can be considered as a blueprint of the life. The cell, the TB bacteria, goes under division, meaning multiplying itself. This genetic material should be duplicated too, that every bacteria should have one set of genome. And uh, this means that uh, when one bacteria goes uh, under division, before the cell division occurs, the DNA molecule, or because uh, tuberculosis is only one DNA molecule as a genome, should be duplicated, should be copied. Okay. And one copy goes to one cell, another copy goes to another cell. And by copying, ideally, we should get two identical DNA molecules. It's occurring most of the time. However, sometimes mistake in copying can occur. Our job is to identify those uh, differences between the molecules. And now we are going to definition to the molecular cluster. Molecular cluster means a group of similar molecules. In our case, uh, the molecular cluster is defined as group of DNA molecules which have less than five differences in the sequence or between two genomes, two DNA molecules. How these differences appear? So these uh, differences uh, occur during the so-called replication 
of the DNA molecule. Replication occurs uh, during the cell division, which means that uh, during the cell division, the DNA molecule should be copied. And uh, during this copying process, this replication process, sometimes mistakes are occurring. And uh, those uh, mistakes cause differences in, between the two molecules. And we are looking for those differences. And then you are looking for those differences in several countries. It's about detection of cross-border molecular clusters. One molecular cluster can uh, contain uh, even more than 100 strains. And those strains can be isolated from two or more different countries. And if a molecular cluster contains strains from uh, two or more countries, then it's considered as a cross-border cluster. Okay, meaning that it's a strain of TB that is the same in two countries. Yes, two or three two or, or three. more countries. Okay, this is clear. How do you proceed to identify those clusters? The first step to do the analysis is to get the genome of the, uh, the bacteria sequenced in the laboratories in the member states, and then member states are submitting the sequences to ECDC database. It's called Epipus. And after the submission, there is an algorithm, a computer program, which does the comparison of the different uh, sequences. And then it calculates the number of differences and group the sequences into clusters, if it's possible. And then you get an alert when uh, there are several identical clusters in several countries. Yes, we can do it automatically. However, after this uh, comparison process, we are getting so-called genetic or phylogenetic tree. And on this phylogenetic tree, we can uh, see the clustering. And then when we identify those clusters, we do basic analysis of the clusters. And then if we detect some uh, unusual behavior within the cluster, then we initiate uh, steps uh, needed for uh, cluster investigation. How many clusters did you find so far? At ECDC, we are focusing currently on the rifampicin resistant or MDR uh, TB strains. And our database contains data from 2017 to 2022. And during this period, we detected uh, 67 cross border molecular clusters of rifampicin resistant or multi drug resistant tuberculosis, strain resistant against rifampicin and azoniazid, which are two basic drugs in the treatment of uh, tuberculosis. Okay. Uh, once you have detected an anomaly, you have to take actions. What type of actions do you take? When we identify the clusters, we can have strains isolated in different years. So it can cover even uh, five to 10 years, even more sometimes. And when we detect the cluster, we look how this cluster behaves during the years. So in fact, we are looking in each year how many new strains were added to the cluster. Tuberculosis is a slow disease. And compared to other diseases, the so-called incubation period is quite long. It can go up to two years or even longer in some cases. And because of that, uh, it is important to see uh, year by year how it develops because we cannot exactly determine time of infection, but we have always time of when this particular strain was isolated from the patient. And because TB genome is quite stable and it doesn't change over uh, years, therefore uh, we need to examine more years in order to see how this uh, particular cluster is developing. This development means that uh, we have a number of strains with the identical genome. Then uh, after some years uh, during the treatment, some mutations, some uh, changes in the genome occur, which uh, provides a resistance against one antibiotic. Then uh, treatment is changed. Then uh, again, uh, bacteria will adapt, develop a new resistance, meaning uh, introducing a new mutation. And within the molecular cluster, we can follow up within the years how this is changing. And then we can see the pattern, the trend within the cluster, how the cluster members are changing over the years. And these uh, changes can provide us very important information about the cluster, the cluster members, and can provide us information for the treatment and for the public health actions. Okay, I see. How do you communicate with countries once you have identified those clusters? There are uh, many ways to communicate with the countries. The most common uh, communication way is that when countries submit the data, either country by itself or ECDC will run this cluster identification uh, analysis uh, process. 
And then if country or ECDC did spots some uh, unusual behavior within the cluster or unusual strain appearing, then in the Epipulse uh, platform, they can post uh, a notification as a signal and ask other countries, do they, do they see the same uh, strain or same uh, pattern, same behavior? And then uh, the countries can collaborate in the Epipulse platform to find out, is this uh, signal a real threat or not? If this uh, signal is a real threat and a real cross-border threat, meaning that we, that signal is appearing in two or more countries, then ECDC provides a platform for uh, coordinated action, like response activities. So what could be these actions? So in case of uh, we detect a cross-border cluster, which is not just a signal, which uh, meets the criteria of uh, threat, then uh, ECDC will present it to the uh, daily epidemic intelligence discussion and then uh, based on the decision made on this uh, daily epidemic intelligence discussions ECDC can consider response activities it includes uh, informing the EU member states informing the commission and other relevant international uh, organizations okay and these epidemic intelligence discussions they are between uh, countries or they are at the level of ECDC this is uh, at level of ECDC And then um, the countries are receiving every day report about these discussions. And then um, based on that, uh, countries can react or ACDC response team can take over the activities and uh, organize the coordinated response activities between ECDC and the member states involved. You mentioned that these investigations can also be used to detect epidemics or emerging strains, right? Yes, that's true. However, in tuberculosis, epidemic doesn't mean the same like epidemic in COVID or influenza or salmonella or any quicker diseases. In a tuberculosis, we can detect transmission chains or uh, unusual transmission routes or unusual accumulation of strains, especially resistant strains in specific population. And this is when we react. So for us, epidemic or outbreak of tuberculosis is unusual accumulation of the strains above the normal level. Okay, yeah. So it doesn't mean that you have to take urgent actions. Urgent action in tuberculosis is slightly different than in other diseases. Mm. The most urgent action after uh, detection of uh, emerging strains or unusual behavior that we inform the countries involved and then the countries can uh, perform contact tracing or other public health activities which are used in the countries to identify the possible contacts and to go for a screening of those contacts and finding the possible tuberculosis infection in those contacts. And of course, uh, they need to collaborate if it's a cross-border cluster to collaborate with different countries involved in this cluster. What is ECDC added value in doing this? The biggest added value of ECDC in these activities is that ECDC hosts database which uh, includes all EUEA countries who are submitting molecular typing data to ECDC. ECDC provides a platform where countries can communicate about the identified signals and uh, can uh, provide coordinated actions for the member states if it's a cross-border activity or action needed. Tuberculosis is a slow disease, as I said, and the biggest contribution is to identify the transmission chains and to break those transmission chains. So, in fact, we need to stop transmission from an infectious patient to the other people in the community. When we stop transmission and we successfully treat the tuberculosis, it means we are moving towards the elimination. As a European citizen, how do I benefit from this work? With the early identification of the transmission chains and the early implemented preventive actions, we stop the transmission. So your probability to be infected with TB, it's uh, getting lower. And uh, I think this is the most important for the European citizens that they are protected or minimizing the possibility for infection. And then if unfortunately you got infected and you develop the disease by quick analysis of bacterial genome, we can predict the possible resistance pattern of the strain. You can get uh, much quicker the adequate TB treatment and it increases your possibility to be healed and it diminishes the possibility that you will infect people around yourself. So I see that TB is well monitored at the European level and we have less and less chances to catch it. In the last decades, the new cases of tuberculosis are decreasing. 
Okay, COVID had some impact on the trends, but anyway, the overall trend is decreasing. It means that in Europe, the public has actions to prevent the spread of TB and go, go towards the elimination is uh, working. Of course, there is always uh, room for improvement. However, we have tools uh, to ensure this uh, way that we are going towards the elimination. Okay, thank you, Chaba, for this interesting conversation. <laughs> We hope you enjoy listening to this podcast about tuberculosis and detection of cross-border molecular clusters. If you would like to know more, please visit our website ecdc.europa.eu or follow us for the latest news on social media.